Hey everyone, it's Matthew, and today we're going to be going over the bubble temperature and the dew temperature. So the bubble temperature is the temperature at which a binary system has its liquid begin to vaporize into the vapor phase. So the temperature at which the first bubble begins to form is the bubble temperature, and the dew temperature is simply the temperature at which the vapor in the system first starts to condense into a liquid. And so both of these equations, or the equations to find this temperature, can be derived from the Raoult's Law, and we're going to do the bubble temperature first. So we can start with Raoult's Law, which states that the Luca mole fraction of component I times its saturation vapor pressure is equal to the vapor mole fraction of component I times the total pressure. Now, what if we have a binary system and there's so there's two different components of it. Well, we can write out this equation for both components and say the mole fraction of the liquid for component one is equal to, or times its saturation vapor pressure is equal to the vapor mole fraction of component one times the total pressure. And then we can go ahead and do the same thing for component two as well. And so, if we have this system of two components, we can add the left side of both equations together, as well as the right side. <coughs> so we get the liquid mole fraction of component one times its vapor or saturation pressure, plus the liquid mole fraction of component two times its saturation vapor pressure is equal to the vapor mole fraction of component one times the total pressure plus the vapor mole fraction of component two times the to times the whole pressure. And so say we want to find, we want to simplify this a little bit more. Well we know, first of all, we can assume that we know the liquid mole fractions and we can easily find the saturation vapor pressure with the Antoine equation and we know the total pressure here. And so we don't know the vapor mole fractions, but we know that they add up to 1 because of the way they are defined. And so we can draw out P, or the total pressure, here, put Y1 plus Y2, which is the summation of the vapor mole pressure or vapor mole fractions, and that will simply equal P. And this side we can remain, we can keep it the same. And if you wanted, you could, because the mole fractions of the liquid are equal to 1 as well, we could also write this left side here as being the mole fraction of the liquid for component 1 times its saturation vapor pressure plus 1 minus the, mole, the liquid mole fraction of component 1 times the saturation vapor pressure of component 2. And it would still be equal to pressure the total pressure. We can just work with this equation here. And so here we can let, write up this left side as a summation of all components i, which are just going to be 1 and 2. And we can put, we're basically just rewriting the Rowlett's Law here, which is the look and mole ratio of components i times their saturation of vapor pressures and that summation is going to be equal to the total pressure. And so by using this, we can actually just find the temperature at which the first bubble begins, or the temperature, the bubble temperature. And that's because at equilibrium, the saturation vapor pressure is equal to the vapor pressure, which can be found with, or with the Antoine equation here. Of course, A, B, and C are all constants specific to the compound. So T, the temperature, is the only thing that varies. And so we can find a satisfiable value for T so that when this is plugged in here, we get this equation satisfied. And once this equation is satisfied, then we will have found the point at which the first bubble forms. Thus, the temperature associated with the uh, saturation vapor pressure is the bubble temperature. So now we'll go ahead and work with the dew temperature. 
and it's very similar to how we find the bubble temperature. So with the dew temperature, we assume that we already know the mole ratios of the vapor phase. So we can actually just go ahead and rewrite our two components in their equations here. So the liquid mole fraction of component one times the saturation of vapor pressure is equal to the vapor mole fraction of it times the total pressure. And then the same thing for component two. And in this case, we know the total pressure of the system, and we also know the vapor mole fractions, but we don't know the liquid mole fractions, and we can solve for a saturation vapor pressure that makes an equation satisfied. So what we can do here is rewrite each equation so that we are finding or solving for x2 and x1, so the liquid mole ratios. So we can say x1, the liquid mole ratio of component one, is equal to its vapor mole ratio times the total pressure divided by its saturation vapor pressure. And we'll do the same thing here for component two as well. And because the way that the mole fractions are defined, we know that x1 plus x2 is equal to one. So what we can do here is take x1, which is the vapor mole ratio of component one times the total pressure divided by the saturation vapor pressure plus x2, which is the vapor mole ratio of component two times the total pressure divided by its saturation vapor pressure is equal to one. And so we can also write this as a summation. So we can say, we can draw out the total pressure and components i, which are one and two. And we can put that the summation times the total pressure, that the summation of the vapor mole ratios divided by their respective saturation vapor pressures is equal to one. Or you can also go ahead and divide by P, but it's unnecessary. So here we again know the vapor mole ratios. We know the total pressure and we're looking again for the saturation vapor pressure. And that can again be found with the Antoine equation. And as the temperature varies and we find a satisfiable value for both saturation vapor pressures, when that, this equation then equals one, we found the temperature at which the first condensed drop of liquid forms from a vapor, which is the dew temperature.